this video I want to give you an overview of how you can use my um, latest extension, the Random Tools extension, in conjunction with rendering. So I'm going to show you how it works uh, basically with a scene in Enscape, um, but the principles work with any rendering software. So you can pick and choose whichever one you want, but this one gives me an immediate feedback so I can show you what is going on here. So I installed the Random Tools extension, have it right here, um, and it's got its features that uh, help you do a bunch of different things. So the first one, for example, is um, maybe not overly obvious right now, but if I look at my hidden geometry and I have my, my terrain, maybe that is a little too regular. Um, you may have to use the smooth tool or something like this. And you just want to rough it up a little bit. So then you can actually go into the terrain. You need to highlight all of the edges at the very least um, that are uh, part of this. And, and then you can go to the uh, random vertex positions tool and you can basically give it a little bit of randomization. So in my case here, I'm going to let it move every vertex by a foot plus minus um, randomized in all directions. It's actually between zero and a foot. And then when I do that, there you go. It didn't do much for me right now, but um, you get the point. This might be really useful for something you're doing. Um, so that's one uh, feature that's really useful. Another uh, set of features actually is this place components randomly on faces um, feature. Or basically you can place components on faces, you can place components on edges, and as of the latest version actually you can place components on vertices as well and you can then determine how many, or basically what percentage of vertices will get a component placement and, and, and you can you know, populate your model that way. So a good example, classic example is of course grass, you know, where you have a lot of grass elements that need to be placed everywhere. Now with Enscape, I don't need to do that. As long as I have the grass texture, it does it in the rendering software. But if you needed to do that, you can place grass that way. Now I'm gonna use it though for other things. And especially now when I go in here, <clears throat> I can go ahead and, oops, I need to actually change one thing. This is a little too soft. I'm gonna come on. Yeah, kind of lets me do it. Um, well, let me turn my hidden geometry on. That's most probably the easiest way. So what I want to do now is I want to place a bunch of trees and I want to randomize those. So um, in this software, uh, I do get a few, um, uh, uh, you know, landscape elements. <clears throat> those basically came from the asset library, Enscape's asset library, and once once you load them into your model, you, you got them like this. So now I already loaded them in. They kind of look like this. Everything is a little slow, unfortunately, but I can place one tree right here. Now, the, here we go. The way you want to place it with my tools now is you basically need to select wherever you want to place it. So I'm going to select a bunch of faces, how about here, a little bit there. Okay, so now I've got some of those selected and you need to select a component. And this could be a component that's literally placed on the model like I did here or on the side, it doesn't really matter. Now I'm gonna click on place components randomly. And now I can decide how many per face. Now remember this, this is made up of triangles, so I don't wanna have too many, otherwise the trees are gonna look weird. So one is actually maximum. Um, this is actually where the new vertex feature comes in really handy because then there's more spacing between the elements because they get placed on vertices, but they're then a little too regular so that you have to kind of mess that up a little bit later too. But in any case, so I'm gonna say one per face because sometimes um, the, the tool actually misses a face, which is actually not too bad because then, you know, you get a little bit of a um, better distribution. Then the rotation, uh, let it do the full circle if it needs to. 
and then a little bit scale variation. So if I had zero, then they're all the same size. This is usually not overly realistic, so you want to have something. I'm going to do 0.5, and you can go up from there, of course. Um, trees typically point up. Uh, you need to, depending on what it is you want to place there, decide whether you want to have it oriented normal or up. Grass, for example, would be um, typically oriented normal, but trees and, and other plants, you know, <laughs> typically grow upward. <laughs> um, and then, of course, I could place everything on its own layer if I had created a layer or a tag beforehand, and so then that would show up here. But I'm just going to keep it on the default. All right, so now I'm going to say OK. And there we are, instant landscape. And the nice thing is that everything looks reasonably random, right? Trees are all slightly different. Everything's pretty well done. Now I could go through actually and see if there are some that are too close, but but that worked reasonably well. <laughs> okay, so that's one version. Another version, actually I'm going to get rid of this one. Got to get rid of this one tree here, um, just so that I can highlight it. Another version is that I could place components randomly on edges. And in my case here, I could, oops, missed the edge right there. Okay, so now I've got a few edges there. I don't know, I mean, however you want to arrange this. So now um, I actually want to put a row of bushes there along that edge. I'm just going to drag one in. Oh, and that of course deselected my edge. So I'm going to go back. There we go. Edges selected, bush selected, and we're going to go into the next tool, place components randomly on edges. I'm going to allow it to do more for. Uh, again, you know, rotation, height variation, and up again. And there you go. There they are. All placed nicely along that edge. And this one here I don't want, so that's pretty good. Okay, so now um, a classic thing is, of course, that they may be where you want them, but maybe they're aligned too well, if they're, especially if they're placed on edge. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of those. I'm going to go into my next tool over here, Randomize Object Scale Rotation Position. So I could, again, you know, rotate them if I wanted to, but I already did that. Um, and then again, the scale I already did as well. If I wanted to go further, you can, you can, you know, apply another factor. But basically now what I want to do is I want them to be somewhat random, maybe a a foot might be too much, but six inches in all directions, that sounds more reasonable. So when I do that and click OK, they just get so ever so slightly moved. Here you go. And now I've got that a little bit more realistic. Anyway, so you get the point. You can use that. And then, of course, you can use the same tool on anything like what, what we had earlier here. So any of these trees, if I highlight those, and go to randomize objects. <clears throat> if, for example, the height might be too similar, I can actually crank that down. Um, I'm going to have them uh, vary by two feet in all directions. And there you go. Now we've got a slightly different forest happening there. Right here. So that's. Um, that set of tools and you can now do a bunch of other things too. For example, um, you can swap out components or objects. In my case, it doesn't make sense because I <laughs> uh, wouldn't want to swap the trees and the bushes. But, you know, uh, every once in a while you need to, you know, kind of randomly swap things out too. So you can experiment with any of these features. They're really useful for that. So the last thing that I wanted to show you actually happens right here. And classic problem there. Oops, let me just unselect. Classic problem there is I've created some kind of a slatted 
<laughs> I don't know, <laughs> louvers, set of louvers. Um, out of wooden boards, they all have knots at the same location because they're all copies of each other and there's nothing worse than having textures be too repetitive. So now I want to um, randomize that a little bit and that's what this last tool does. It basically randomizes texture position. Um, it doesn't rotate the texture, so you have to have it somewhat oriented, but you kind of want that uh, if, if the wood grain goes in the right direction here, then you know all you want is basically to shift the texture around a little bit so that it looks more random. So I'm going to highlight all of these. One thing that's important to know is that this tool works on ungrouped faces or groups, but it does not work on components because it shouldn't work on components since they are supposed to be copies of each other um, for efficiency and a bunch of other reasons. So that's why you will have to have groups for this to work. All right, so now I got my groups highlighted and then all I need to do is click the button and we're randomized. Over here looks good, over there looks good. This looks far more realistic all of a sudden and we're good. If you're not happy with it, hit the button again and you get something else. Oh, <laughs> it's actually getting, getting more aligned here. Um, okay, one more. So that is, of course, a real useful tool for for getting your textures tweaked and, and ready for, for rendering. All right, so you can see there's a bunch of really nifty tools available in the Random Tools extension. Uh, feel free to experiment with it and use it for rendering or for whatever you want to to um, improve your models. All right, have fun.